all of the churches in North and Middle Peaks. And he was also a man, as many have said before me, of many talents. For most of his early life, he worked as a fisherman right here in Texas Cape's Island. But because of limited opportunities in the Turks and Pagans Island at the time, my father migrated to Pine Ridge in the Bahamas in search of a better way of life. He was employed in the lumber industry, cutting logs in Pine Ridge. And by the late 50s and 60s, when Freeport commenced their tourism industry, my father worked as a common. He often told us many stories of working on the Jack Tar Hotel in West End. While in the Bahamas, as my father often told the story, somewhere in the early 60s, he said, he had the vision of building a very large motor vessel, which, as it turned out, spurred the development of basic infrastructure in the Caicos Islands and Providence Islands, as he would say. As was mentioned earlier, it was a large cargo vessel but what was special about this vessel is that it was a shallow draft vessel built by his own hands, which drew two feet of water, fully loaded. Now, to make you understand that, an estimate in today's world, that would be about four 20-foot container loaded with cargo. My father was a visionary. In 1966, he returned to Jackson Cakes Island and built the boat according to his vision to accommodate the depth of waters around North and Middle Cakes. This boat, as he usually puts it, was responsible for the development of the roads and airports in North and Middle Cakes. And that's a fact. Upon completion of planking of the boat, Mr. Lim McGuire, who was responsible to supply fuel to Michael Pine Equipment Company, who had the contract to build the roads and the airport in North and Middle Cakes, heard of this vessel being built and approached our father to contract our father and his boat for the purpose of hauling the fuel between the islands. Also at that time, Covenant Limited had plans to start development by doing rough roads and Covenant Service. And our father also hauled fuel for that company as well. As you can see, my father was a man who had this country at heart. Not only in his youthful days, but also in the latter part of his life. He would always tell us the value of our work as sons of the soil. Because today, he would say, the value of Turks and Caicos Islanders are being diminished day by day, he would say. I recall his last days on earth. He would always say that Native man and woman of this country is being pushed to the back of our society, and we better do something about it before it's too late. I recall a very funny story about our dad. When a white man, as he puts it, approached him by 
buying, about buying some land. And in his usual Baba Jack way, he said, Now, Mr. White Man, I think you better go to Bravo. Because <laughs> ain't no land and about a big percent. On a more serious note, in mourning our father's dad, he will be missed for his love. He will be missed for his wisdom. He will be missed for his candor. But we all can say, but what we all can say will never die is the principles he taught us of being firm. And as he would say, never let anybody trample on your rights, but most especially your birthright, I tell you. Thank <laughs> you. 
and pour the tinder's pie. Oh, like I said, my night and stay can be Oh, 